Today I am flying Turkish Airlines in economy on their flagship Airbus A350. This 4 hour red eye flight will take us from Istanbul to Dubai. Come along as I review every part of the experience and give my two cents on the current state of Turkish. The journey begins at Istanbul Airport. Good afternoon and welcome back to another flight report. We are at Istanbul Airport, the seventh busiest airport in the world with over 76 million yearly passengers. I am already airside because I just flew in from Belgium on a different Turkish Airlines flight operated by an Airbus A330. I reviewed the exact same journey a few months ago, so I didn't film it this time, but you can watch my other Turkish Airlines review if you want to know what their A330 is like. I now have a transit of about 6 hours here before catching my next flight, TK762, departing Istanbul at half past midnight and arriving in Dubai at 5.55 am. Flight time will be 4 hours and 25 minutes. Unfortunately, things did not start too well. You see, I arrived at the airport at around 6 pm on a different Turkish flight. At 7 pm, however, I got a message from the airline stating that my flight would be delayed for at least 2 hours. They notified me over 5 hours before the scheduled departure time, which was very helpful for people who hadn't reached the airport yet. In short, if you weren't airside already, you would simply come to the airport later. Not a big deal. However, as my transit had already begun, it wouldn't have made much sense to enter Turkey and return airside a few hours later. Consequently, my 6 hour layover had just become an 8 hour layover. But okay, not the end of the world. It is now time to talk about Istanbul Airport or IST. The airport only has one terminal which is divided into 5 concourses. And the word humongous doesn't do this building any justice. It is, in fact, the world's third largest airport terminal with an area of 1.4 million square meters. And that is my first issue with this airport. It is simply too freaking big and doesn't have any rapid transit system to get from one end to the other. Airports like Doha, Munich and Dubai have trains or monorails connecting various terminals and concourses which is what Istanbul should have, but they don't. IST makes you walk. A lot. As an example, walking from concourse A to concourse F takes about 40 minutes, which is why short layovers at Istanbul airport are not a good idea. On a positive note, the airport's gigantic size has the effect of spreading out the crowds, which is great. And now comes the most annoying part. They give you one hour of free Wi-Fi. I mentioned this in my Air Arabia review and I am gonna continue mentioning it as long as this stupid policy remains in place. It was ridiculous in 2019 when this airport opened and it is even more unacceptable in 2024. No major airport of this size charges passengers for Wi-Fi. It is pure and simple money grubbing. And that's it, rant over. Well, not quite. I do want to mention that the prices at IST are really high, even for airport standards. 6 euros for a Coke is punchy, and the cheapest sandwich you'll find is around 10 euros. There are free water fountains everywhere though, which is good. Don't get me wrong, I am not hating on this airport. There are in fact lots of things to like. They have these napping areas, which are really comfortable and quiet. I actually spent about 2 hours here and got quite a bit of work done. Also, if you fly in from the EU, you don't have to go through transit security, which really speeds up the process. 
And finally, IST is a great location for plane spotting thanks to the large windows which aren't blocked by anything. So yeah, an airport with plenty of potential, but they really need to sort out a few issues before being able to compete with the best. And here is our plane, an Airbus A350-900, delivered just last year. Turkish has 23 of those and 68 more on order. They've also taken 4 A350 orders from Aeroflot and these kept their original interior. Ours, however, isn't one of those. Now, delays are never fun, especially late at night. But I have to say that Turkish managed this one incredibly well. The plane had been sitting at the gate for hours but couldn't depart on time because it was waiting for a sizable number of connecting passengers whose flights to Istanbul were delayed. I know this because Turkish communicated every step along the way and they also handed out free water and some kind of lemonade at the gate. So yeah, the delay was annoying, but it was somewhat mitigated by the airline's exemplary handling of the situation. We finally started boarding at 1.55 am, 35 minutes before the new scheduled departure time. This A350 has 32 life flat seats in business class and 297 in economy. The coach section is in a 333 layout. I am in 25 Alpha today, a window seat in the middle of the plane. The seats are top notch and they come with one of the largest entertainment screens in the industry. There is plenty of legroom, USB charging, power sockets, a seat back pocket and a standard tray table. A pillow was already waiting and blankets were available upon request. I was a bit surprised that they didn't provide blankets straight away, but I guess they only do that on flights longer than 5 hours. But yeah, this is a world-class economy product and as you would expect from a one-year-old plane, the cabin was immaculate. Alas, the delay became even greater than 2 hours. We started taxiing out to the runway at 3.25 am and had to wait for another 35 minutes to get a takeoff slot. We finally departed at 4 am, three and a half hours late. As a result of the delay, I was a bit scared that Turkish would serve breakfast instead of dinner as a cost-cutting measure. But I needn't have worried, because if there's one area where Turkish never disappoints, it's catering. There were two dinner options, beef or vegetarian pasta, and I went for the beef. It was a set of köfte meatballs with rice, lentils overbaked with cheese, vegetables, a warm bread roll, some salad and a sweet dessert cake. This meal was yummy and high quality as you would expect from an airline that's world renowned for its catering. Better still, it went down very well with a bottle of Turkish Cabernet Sauvignon. And finally, kudos for the metal cutlery and the fact that they use very little plastic. 
After the meal, I checked out the in-flight entertainment system, which is top of the line. The screens are enormous, and so is the library. Over 1,700 films and TV show episodes, as well as moving maps, exterior cameras, and games. In simple terms, you will not get bored if you fly Turkish. Wi-Fi is also available for reasonable fees. I ended up watching a bit of Napoleon, but fell asleep rather quickly. It was 5am at this point and I was knackered. I woke up at around 7am. The loo was clean, but didn't feature any amenities, as is usually the case on Turkish. On a different note, the cabin crew were friendly, professional and fast. Anyhow, the pilots had managed to cancel out some of our initial delay, but we would still arrive a few hours behind schedule. We landed at 8.55 am, 3 hours late. I bought this ticket as an award flight through the Lufthansa Miles and More program. Both Lufthansa and Turkish are part of Star Alliance, so you can book award flights on both airlines through their respective loyalty programs. I paid 20,000 Lufthansa miles and 62 euros in taxes and fees. The full itinerary included a flight from Brussels to Istanbul. That was an excellent deal, but the cash price of this journey was over 500 euros, which is expensive considering that there are much cheaper alternatives to get from Western Europe to Dubai. Wrapping it up, I am giving this flight an 8 out of 10. Yes, the delay was a bummer and the cash price is very high. So you might say that they should get a lower score. However, this was my 17th Turkish flight and I have to say that they are extremely consistent when it comes to the quality of their cabins and especially their catering. And finally, delays can happen, but they managed this one very well. And that is it for today. As always, let me know your opinion down in the comments. Thanks very much for watching and see you next time. Goodbye.